And uh, uh, Indra Shekhar, this one is to you. The sowing numbers seem pretty well, as I just said, 40% higher than compared to last year. That wasn't really the situation when we see March to May, because at that time, the seed sales itself were down by 25%. But with the kind of progress that we've seen in monsoon, the sowing numbers clearly have picked up. But even with that, what has been your sense when we look at vegetables, flowers, food grains? How are you looking at all of those categories? Thank you, Manisha. See, I think you've raised very important points, and we must consider that the period from March to April, March to May was the very critical time for the seed industry, as the seed industry was engaged in preparing the seeds for the kharif season. Now, in the particular kharif season, we've seen that cereals have really picked up. Overall, the response from the seed industry is that it's a positive season and people, yes, the industry is booming, but when it comes to vegetable seeds, now the seed sales are almost about to finish and we hear that there may be a drop of 20 to 30 percent in vegetable sowing. Now, this is because the farmer is very scared, right? The farmer is thinking that, can I transport my vegetables? Will I get the right prices? So the farmer has been conservative, they've gone back to cereal crops and there we see a new trend emerging, which is of maize. In, when it comes to North India, particularly Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, we've seen that the maize crop has, has basically taken over a lot of acreage and farmers are buying, you know, we've got reports from seed industry and smaller, you know, smaller companies that have said that we've sold everything that is in our stock. Okay. So it looks quite positively. When it comes to flowers, you mentioned, uh, so the Gende Kapool, which is also marigold, we've seen maybe a 60 to 70 percent drop in that because there are no seed sales for marigold. So these are some of the new trends that are emerging. And uh, of course, there has also been, uh, in some areas, are reporting that cotton has gone down and some other areas are reporting some illegal seeds that are coming in. Sure. So these are some of the challenges, but overall, it's looking positively. Mm. I actually want to take you on the challenges itself. While it, well, it is about the illegal seeds of, uh, or weaker quality seeds, it's what we hear reports as well, or the overpriced seeds, seeds which perhaps did not go through all the certification. I mean, there are various issues when it comes to seeds. That is one part of it, and there are also reports that uh, the farmers had to, you know, sow seeds from their uh, stocks and there are some failed germinations in Maharashtra. There have been reports of that as well. So how do you look at, one, the issues within the seeds and how do you look at the seed prices year-on-year -year basis? See, for the soybean seed that you mentioned, let's not jump to conclusion. There are, it's, it's a, basically, it's a natural phenomenon which is based on many externalities mm -hmm. which include okay. handling of the seeds, which include germination, soil moisture, and the matter is subjudice. So let us give uh, the, the competent players, the scientists and the agri-experts enough time to investigate. Okay. You know, it's, it, because agriculture is not like industry, we have to take into account that it can be the fault of nature and somehow environmental conditions. When it comes to actually rising costs, well, uh, you see that the transportation cost, the logistic cost within the industry has risen quite, uh, you know, quite, by, by, by a very strong margin. Okay. And a result of that, we are saying that many of the employees within the seed sector have now are now basically uh, being asked to go away or basically are being fired because the small and medium players are suffering very much. You know, we repeatedly we've asked the government for some kind of soft loans or some kind of seed stimulus package, and the government has not been responsive yet. We hope that the government realizes that the small seed player, players are Indian players and if they go away, the, the Indian seed sector will, there will be a vacuum and the industry will suffer. Mm. Now, when talking about seed issues, again, I would bring your attention to the HD cotton issue right. in, which, in which the industry reports that there are about 50 lakh packets mm. of this illegal HD cotton which are going around and being sold in Maharashtra, Telangana, and Andhra Pradesh. Now, if you value that much, that's about 300 crore rupees. Now, this money, this 300 crore rupees, has been illegally sabotaged from the legal business and goes directly into the hands of illegal players who've been operating in India. Hmm. So, my question to the government is, and to everybody watching this, when, when, there is, when there are problems with the environment, you issue FIRs against seed companies. Hmm. But when proper players, motivated agents, are yeah. making 300 crores illegally in this country. There is not even a single FIR file. Okay. Why is the government taking so much time in responding to such a big biodiversity fiasco? It so, is not only that the Indian businesses will suffer, but once HT trade is released in the government, legally released. Absolutely. I get your point, Andhra Shekhar, there, because while on one side, we